gets powerful. If you ever find yourself weighed down by a sin you can't get rid of. And I don't mean get rid of the act of the sin. It's that sin you committed on a Tuesday night in 1973 and it's still <laughs> haunting you. Right. That's what Cranmer's getting at when he says, if you need help, go and open your grief to a discreet and understanding priest. Listen to that. It's not open your sin. It's open your grief. That you might receive a sh removal of scruple and doubt, worry and doubt. Doubt about what? Am I still good enough? Right. And the assurance of pardon. Uh, in the 1975 prayer, or 1979 prayer book, my favorite thing at the very end that it said was uh, I, after pronouncing the absolution, I got to say these beautiful lines. I said, the Lord has put away all your sins. Now pray for me, a sinner. So it's very egalitarian, sort of. We're all in the same boat. And it's very affirming for those who need it. Not necessary. Other questions? And then we'll get into sacramental worldview. What's a sacramental worldview? How the world reviews or views what the sacraments are? Well, or? could be. But let's let this modify this. Here's how I'll help you. Now you're suddenly going to understand, because this is the opposite. What's a materialistic worldview? I said tangible things. Yeah. My grandfather was a scientist out at the labs. What was the world to him? Science. Numbers. When I went to seminary, he said, Les, I have no problem with what you're doing, but if I can't me measure something, it doesn't exist. Materialistic worldview. And it can sound even like a positive thing, not a negative thing. When we count our steps, mm -hmm. what is that? It's a materialistic worldview. I'm only as good as uh, uh, my steps. Mm -hmm. If I only hit 8,000 today, man, I'm a failure. I've got to get those 10,000. Uh, materialistic worldview. What do we say to each other? Hi, I'm Les. What do you do? Yeah. Isn't that reductionistic? What do you do? Not who are you. Not what brings you joy. What do you do? Uh, materialistic worldview. Uh, how much do you earn? We don't ask that, but we all wonder. <laughs> My son asks questions like that. Yeah, <laughs> that's why he's refreshing. Yeah. Um, but that materialistic worldview is the idea that came from the Enlightenment that suggests that whether or not there's a God, the universe is this machine, and the only thing we can concern ourselves with is the machine. What you see is what you get. That's the materialistic worldview. So, if this is kind of what a sacrament is, and this is the opposite, What's a sacramental one? And when God was finished creating, he looked at the world and said what? It's good. It is good. And then he created us on the last day, and what did he say? It's very good. <laughs> Only time he says very. The idea being... That what the materialists think of as everything is just the matter. Where did the form come from? Darwin would say the form came from a thousand billion million trial and errors. Where do we say the form came from? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The Logos. Logos can mean a lot of things. It means Word, but it's also helpful to think of it as blueprint. So we have this matter, all this stuff, and it, with due respect to our friends, and there's some evidence of some evolutionary processes, but it's not just trial and error. There's a 
blueprint. And that blueprint isn't an it, it's a who. And what's the promise? This is the tricky one. What's the promise? We should have everlasting life if we believe, right? Well, that's the promise for us, but what's the promise for the world? Sacramental, remember? That means that somehow I can find God in this chair. God is in every living thing. God is in everything. Now, this is not the heresy of pantheism, that everything is God. No, 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 we don't believe that. And it's subtle and it's hard to get. We're not saying everything is God. Any, every, everything is God. But we're saying that everything has the potential to be filled for a time and a purpose by the sacramental presence of God. That this universe, because it's built according to the form of the logos, can be an icon, a window through which we can see the divine. I, I can see the divine I have. Um, you know, I've been away a long time. One of my favorite things right now is sitting out on the front porch and listening to the cicadas. They don't have those in Africa. And I was away from here for 30 years. No, but they have lions over yeah. there. <laughs> and sometimes when I sit outside in the evening and I watch the lightning bugs and I hear the cicadas, sometimes it's just a nostalgic memory of when Les grew up in East Tennessee. But other times, I am suffused with a joy and a transcendent sense of peace that is way more than the fact that I grew up here. I am not just hit by memory and beauty. I'm hit with capital B beauty. And they administer the grace of God to me. Sometimes, as Kate would tell you, we're just a man and a wife doing the best we can, and we look at each other and we say, who are you? After all these years, who is this stranger I married? And why are you in my house? <laughs> Other times, I look at her. And I see flesh in my flesh and bone in my bone. And I sense a unity that can't be described by the fact that we live together. That's what the poor mater materialists try and get when they say soulmate. Sometimes the sacramental goodness of God comes to me through my marriage. Sometimes it comes to me through you. Um, sometimes it comes to me through your kids. Sometimes it's a sunrise. Sometimes it's a mountain. Now, again, we're not saying any of those things are God. But they have the capacity to be filled with the grace of God in such a way that they reveal the logos to us. So how many sacraments are there? Well, it depends on what you're asking. There are two gospel sacraments. There are five generally recognized sacramentals. But if the sacramental worldview is real, how many sacraments are there? Infinity. In, yeah, yeah. And see, we live in a sad universe, don't we? The universe we inhabit. I don't mean the one God designed. Mm -hmm. What do you do? How much do you earn? Did you get your steps in? Did you eat too many carbs today? It's that universe that makes us walk like this. <laughs> we slowly get reduced to machines ourselves. The beauty, beautiful thing about the sacramental worldview is we shouldn't be walking like this. We should be walking like this. The heavens declare the glory of God. Amen. The fact of the matter is, there is nothing here that was created without the touch of the logos. And that touch means that everything here isn't okay. Everything here isn't manageable. Everything has the potential to be very good. And whereas the mechanical universe, what we're always looking for is something better, right? We can improve this. 